Hello students. Today we'll discuss the short question answer part four. The first question is that why the spleen enlarges towards the right iliac fossa. The another way of asking this question is why does physician start palpation for the spleen along the right spino uh, spino umbilical line towards the left costal margin. Now you have to keep this thing in mind that spleen is generally not palpable. but once it become palpable it is already twice of its size and the spleen become palpable under under the left costal margin now the spleen uh, never enlarge vertically downward because it is supported from its lateral side by the phrenico colic ligament so this phrenico colic ligament which supports the lateral end of the spleen prevent its vertical downward enlargement that's why it always enlarges towards the right iliac fossa The next question is the secretion of parotid gland preserved even the glossopharyngeal nerve injured during tonsillectomy why the preganglionic parasympathetic fibers arises from the cell bodies in the inferior salivary nucleus in the medulla and you know that these fibers which are preganglionic they travel through the glossopharyngeal nerve and glossopharyngeal nerve gives a branch is known as tympanic branch of glossopharyngeal nerve this tympanic branch enters into the middle ear cavity where you have the tympanic plexus so this tympanic branch arises very early from the glossopharyngeal nerve and that's why what will happen that when the glossopharyngeal nerve injured in the tonsillar fossa the branch is already arised that's why the secreto motor supply of parotid gland is spared and the secretions of parotid gland are preserved the next question is why does the damage of facial nerve causes pain in the eye the facial nerve injury lead to the denervation of lacrimal gland and you know that lacrimal gland parasympathetic fibers are coming with the your facial nerve so whenever there is a facial nerve injury occurs there is a compromisation of the parasympathetic supply of the lacrimal gland so there is no further production of the tear and that will lead to the dryness and desiccation of the cornea since the sensations are carried by the ophthalmic nerve which is normal so the dryness is causing pain and these pain sensations which are carried by the ophthalmic nerve is is the reason that there is a pain with the injury of facial nerve in eye the next question is why does the extension of elbow is possible in case of radial nerve injury in radial groove now the only answer is which you have to keep in mind that the triceps is having three head and its long head is already supplied by the radial nerve before the radial nerve enters into the spiral groove or the radial groove so because the branch of radial nerve supply the long head of triceps arise proximal to the entry of radial nerve in the spiral groove that's why this long head of triceps is still able to perform some extension at elbow joint the last question is which are the normal anatomical narrowing or constriction sites of the esophagus now you have this question so many times that once you are trying to insert rails tube through uh, in a patient then which are the normal points of resistance so first is at the beginning in the neck where it surround by the upper esophageal sphincter second the region of the contact with the arch of aorta third the point where esophagus is crossed by the left bronchus and fourth at the esophageal hiatus of diaphragm So these are the questions for today's session thank you